Hey friends, Kim McAuliffe here, the jazz vinyl lover in yet another crowded corner of my tiny apartment. And today I thought I'd talk about a, uh, a couple of my other favorite Blue Note records. And these are all different pressings, Liberty pressings, New York pressings, uh, one Lexington pressing. Uh, I have a bunch of Blue Notes. Blue Notes are a very dependable label. Um, it's really hard to go wrong with any of the records for me until you start getting to the mid-70s when the label is bought by... Uh, even post Liberty, even post Transamerica, EMI buy them. I'm really tired. I don't know, but for my money, I don't really want to hear Alphonse Muzan records from the late from the mid '70s. That's when Blue Note kind of lost the mojo for me. Um, I like it up to the early '70s. So we have a. Speaking of the '70s, this might be a late '60s. I don't look up the uh, the uh, dates on these, but this is a fantastic Jackie McLean record. Uh, Jack McLean's one of those artists where, as far as Blue Note goes, I don't think he made a bad record. His earlier records prior to Blue Note are good, the records on Prestige, and even before that I think he has some records on Jubilee, but they're not very focused. And my feeling is that he wasn't getting to rehearse. That's the big difference at Blue Note, they were rehearsing. They got paid rehearsals. Now, as I was thinking today, you know, Rudy Van Gelder had a very tight recording schedule. He was recording like five labels. It, it, uh, at, at uh, Inglewood Cliffs. So were the guys rehearsing for the sessions in Inglewood Cliffs? That doesn't seem, I mean, because those records, the Blue Note records, they, you know, they're tight. That's why the records are so dynamic and together and have great solos, because they weren't just like reading the charts down. These aren't blowing sessions like some prestige records are. They're really playing tight, sometimes rather difficult arrangements. So my question is, were they getting paid to, re to rehearse in the studio before they cut the records? Were they rehearsing somewhere else? Was there somewhere near Inglewood Cliffs they were rehearsing? I don't know, I really haven't seen that discussed. I've just heard that, you know, Alpha Lion paid for rehearsals. Anyway, this is a great Jackie McLean record, maybe a little bit harder to find, Demon's Dance. Uh, it's got this weird freaky cover. And uh, it's got a great lineup. I got it mainly because it's an early example of Jack DeJohnette when he sort of first hit the scene. But it's uh, Jack DeJohnette, Woody Shaw, Jack McLean, Lamont Johnson, Scott Hull, Jack DeJohnette. I mean, it's a storming record. There's the back cover. Uh, and this is a, uh, a Liberty Pressing. Excuse me. Ah, uh, whatever, you know, you, you know what a Liberty Pressing looks like. Next up, there are many Art Blakey and the Jazz me Messengers records. This is one of my very favorites. It's the great lineup of Freddie Hubbard, Wayne Shorter, Curtis, Curtis Fuller, Cedar Walton, Jamie Merritt. And I think there's something about Freddie Hubbard and Wayne versus Lee Morgan and Wayne. Freddie's a much more aggressive uh, way, a, a player. I think perhaps Lee Morgan was a little more uh, artistic. Freddie went more for the jugular. Maybe Freddie had better technique. He took a lot of chances. He could be a little more ragged, but... Um, burning technique on his records. Uh, maybe not as uh, cool as Lee Morgan, but uh, this is just a great uh, pressing. And there we have the, uh, you know, end of the road, uh, blue black. These are like the last year of blue nut pressings that still have a Van Gelder stamp. Um, I guess they even do a cover of uh, Moon River on here. Backstage Sally, Contemplation, Booze Delight, Reincarnation Blues, Shaky Jake. I don't know which one of those tunes are uh, Wayne Shorter's. Contemplation, that sounds like one of his titles, right? Then we do some fat back grits and gravy with the fantastic Lou Donaldson. It's funny, if you get really early Lou Donaldson records on Blue Note, they're very bebop. You know, he's coming right out of Charlie Parker. Um, but then as he goes on and gets into his own thing, the records become much more funky. Great lineup, Lou Donaldson, Tom McTurrentine, Grant Green, John Patton, Ben Dixon, The Natural Soul, a stereo pressing. And there's the back. I just got these, what I think are really cool, Mylar sleeves from Clear Bags. Um, I was over at the new uh, Stranded Records here in the city. They have all their records, and I don't like sealable Mylar sleeves, it drives me nuts. But they had Mylar sleeves that were as clear as these, but heavier. And they wouldn't tell me where they got them from. They said they sourced them from a uh, commercial supplier who wouldn't sell to the public. There's a nice 
Liberty Records stereo label. Isn't that pretty? That's what I'm talking about. Mono stereo. You know, for I think 58 or 59 onwards, he was doing two track the whole way. So to do mono, they just fold it down. Uh, so you wonder, is there a difference really? Because the, the mono made out of stereo. Mono records have a real pump, a real drive. They don't have the resolution. You don't hear the detail because it's in mono. But it's interesting, a mono record does have a sound stage. It's not just a little hole. It creates its own sound stage, or perhaps your mind creates the sound stage, but it's there. And there's much more drive uh, because you have more low-end kick in a mono record. Um, people talk about the various Lee Morgan and Hank Mobley records, but they don't talk about this one much, in my estimation. I don't see it even posted much in um, the Jazz Vinyl Group. This is a storming record. Uh, they are going for the jugular on this record. This is a Japanese pressing. Sorry, I don't know the date on this. This is a Toshiba EMI pressing. Lee Morgan, Hank Mobley, Winton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Charlie Persip, High and Flighty, Speak Low, Peckin' Time, Stretching Out, Get Go Blues. This is, to me was just a real blowing session. I don't know whose tunes are whose, but uh, you know, people like, you know, in Lee Morgan, there's City Lights and Candy and all those early blue notes that are just amazing. Hank Mobley's got so many great records, Caddy for Daddy, No Room for Squares, Workout, Soul Station. Um, but this is a, Really, this is a great, equally great record to any of those. And I love Soul Station and I love Candy, but uh, they are really blowing hard on this. This is an old school blowing session. And there we can see the Japanese, very clean and petite, reet petite, uh, Japanese Blue Note facsimile of the Blue Note label. And then we have, well, we're done now. We got Herbie Nichols. Herbie Nichols, the great unsung Herbie Nichols who had his own style, he died young. Um, I, think, I think he did two Blue Note records, or maybe just this one, but a monster pianist. People kind of compare him to Monk. I think his style, his signature's just as noticeable as Monk and very playful. He was a great pianist. This is a great lineup, a beautiful Reed Miles cover. There's the cover, there's the back of the cover. Blue Note 1519. 1500 series are the Lexington pressings. Uh, I'll show you the Lexington label. If you can look at my bookcase. There's a beautiful Lexington label. This record is dirty. There it is. Deep Groove, 767 Lexington Avenue. Micro Groove with the P, with the RVG. Anyway, Ken McCall for Jazz Vinyl Lover. Thanks so much for checking in on a Thursday night. I'm really tired, so I'm going to bed now. Thanks.